Good morning. We're here in my driveway at Indian Lake Estates. It's hazy, hot, and threatening thunderstorms, which has pretty much been pat the usual for the past couple of weeks. So I have here the Nike, the Canon, there's the Nikon, the Canon, the Sony 600 GM with the 1.4 teleconverter and the A92. It wouldn't matter what, which lens I had. The Canon 603 is about this weight. The Canon 602 is two pounds heavier. The Nikon is two pounds heavier. Uh, you won't catch me hand holding this much. I tried it once in San Diego for 15 minutes and the next day I couldn't lift my left arm. So it'll be reserved for very short uh, stints of hand holding the 600 GM. It's a pleasure to handhold for people that are younger and stronger, but that does not include me. So Ivan Turpin, who was a really nice man a couple of years ago when I had my trigger finger infected, he gave me some advice, proved to be really important, and he sent an email question asking about the Flexure to Pro, if it was possible to tighten it enough so that when you carry it on your shoulder, the lens doesn't move around. And the answer is very complicated. So I figured much easier to make a video and go over some other important stuff as well. So thanks to Ivan for asking the question. We're gonna start with the Flex Shooter Pro Extreme, which is the big mother. I don't know the weight, but it'll be uh, in the blog post where we post this video. Ah, forgot the most important part. The best way to walk long distances in the field is holding your 600 or 500 lens in one hand and your tripod in another hand, unless you have some sort of pack. You go around, you know, for 30 years, I went around with the big lens on my shoulder on the tripod, and that did a real bad number on my shoulder. I'm rehabbed up pretty good right now but not a smart idea unless you're gonna be doing it once a month and you may get away with it, but not good for health. So, we have the Flex Shooter Extreme on the GIT 404, actually the 404L, the Enduro, and give it approximate balance. So we have the lens on, the silver knob will tighten, and the black lever at the back, you can use to tighten it completely. So for carrying the lens on your shoulder, which I'll do for short distances, what you want to do is stand behind two legs, point the lens towards you, lock the silver knob, make sure the black lever is locked, and then just bend your knees a little. Put the lens up on your shoulder, pull the middle leg down. So at least now if I'm walking with my tripod in the field, I'm not doing what I did for 30 years, which is this. This is really bad stuff because your rotator cuff muscles and all the muscles around the capsule are in the load position. If you do it this way, which I invented, you can Keep your arm pretty much still and you'll notice it doesn't really matter if the tripod is solidly locked i locked it up as good as i could here but it doesn't matter because as you're walking the lens is going to be on sort of the hood is going to be resting on your back so it's not a big issue at all certainly if you put a any 600 lens on a mini you're not going to be able to lock it. I'll just turn the silver knob, loosen it, and put it down, and I'm ready to shoot. Next, we're going to take a look at the Flex Shooter Pro. I have a, a levered version that I'll use in the field, give it a good test. So now we're here. Mount the lens, approximate the balance, and Again, if you keep this thing not fully locked, 
this finger tightened, and this is even loose, then you can flip this around, put the lens up on your shoulder, pull the middle leg through, and walk rather comfortably. So as you can see, it doesn't matter if it's locked or not. You don't want to be having the lens sticking up in the air. You want it sort of resting against the right side of your back as you walk. So piece of cake. And again, smartest thing you can do is not carry the lens on your shoulder at all. Then it's silver knob. Point it back at the subject. Did shift a little bit, so now I just level the bubble, and we're good to go. We're now going to take a look. By the way, people ask about the tension on the Flex Shooter Pro. You set that with the silver knob. It's totally loose. It'll still stay. There goes the garbage truck. Uh, and once you've leveled the the floating bubble in the scribed circle on the silver ball, which I have not done here, then you can pan anywhere. Here comes the garbage truck. Hooray! Now you the garbage truck. So you can pan. you got to wait for a second. You can pan anywhere and be level. So what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, once you center the bubble, the, the, the floating bubble in the scribe circle and everything's firm, silver knob lets you pan or point anywhere and be completely level. If you want to be completely anal, you can turn the level on on the back of the camera and make sure that it's green green for completely level and again if you leave it loose it's a little too loose for me for general shooting a couple of turns i can point it anywhere depending on what you're doing if you're doing flight loose all the way and now we're going to go to the wimberley v2 head oh by the way this is the enduro GIT 404L. I've been keeping this in the back of the car with the Flexure to Pro on it and doing all of my big lens photography out of the car with the 600 on the big tripod and the Flexure to Pro. I should, I'll try it with the Flexure to Pro levered version soon. But the point is. Since I've started playing with the 404L, which I think is only about a pound heavier than this one, but it's way taller. This is the one we recommend for six or five people, where you can get way, way up. And ideal for the tall ones. But my main point is, since I've started playing with the 404L, I love the sturdiness with the big lens, especially with the 2X when I'm out of the car. So when I go over to the GIT 304L, which is great for most po folks up to about six foot, then the 304L seems light. But this is what I use most of the time when I'm at the beach taking a walk. So again, to beat a dead horse, Best way to carry this, this is the uh, CRX5 plate on here. Best way to carry your lens in the field is tripod in one hand and lens in the other hand. Best for shoulder health. I'm just going to put this down for now. Done. Go over to the Wimberley V2 head. This is on an old Gitzo tripod, probably a 3530 LSB. Same business. And check the balance here, front heavy. Slightly back heavy.
some ridiculous reason, walk with your lens stuck up in the air with the tripod on your shoulder, you can tighten the Wimbley down to a greater degree than you can tighten either Flex Shooter Pro, although the extreme would get you pretty tight. But from where I sit, it just doesn't friggin' matter. We showed you how you carry it with the lens on your back. So it's been a long time since I used the Wimbley head because of the weight. So many advantages to the Flex Shooter Pro heads. You can put a short lens on, on the camera body, mount the camera body with the bi-directional plate. Great for the big lenses. Once you level the bubble, you're fine. You can shoot from the car. Lots of huge advantages. But the main advantage is, is the weight. The weight of the two Wimbleys. This is actually the old Wimbley. I might have misspoke. This is the original Wimbley head. And I used to love that for Africa because it's a little taller than the V2. So anyway, carrying it would be the same. You put two legs parallel to the plane of your body. You loosen that. Come here. Bend over a little bit. Bend your knees. And pull the leg through. And not as comfortable either with the Flex Shooter Pro, as it is with the Flex Shooter Pro, but you can see that the lens is sort of resting on my back. So it doesn't matter if you tighten it so that you can fling the lens around. It doesn't really matter. And then lastly, the Wimbley V2 head. You know, actually, this Gitzo 3530, really in good condition, barely used, belonged to my friend Kay Kaler. And this Wimberley head are gonna be for sale. If it strikes your fancy, you're gonna give it for a great price, you can always email me. Last one is the Wimberley V2 head. Same bit, I should have mentioned. Check the... Uh, Balance is pretty good. A little bit front heavy. And yeah, I'm, I'm nuts about the balance point because if you're, if you're not balanced correctly, front to back, you are just gonna produce torque that's gonna result in unsharp images. So I actually like the older one we had a little bit better with the longer swing arm. Uh, made it easier to balance it like this by lowering or raising the platform. We're not going to do that here. But otherwise, the same business. You're going to go for a walk. Hence my advice, you want to carry it on your shoulder. Two legs parallel to the plane of your body. Lock it, finger tight. Pull the middle leg through. And you're good to go for a walk. With the lens sort of resting against my lower back, depending on the head. And my great preference for weight and for uh, again, my great preference for weight and versatility are the Flex Shooter Pro heads. In the car, I've actually been using the Mini on a GIT204L, which is a lighter tripod intended for the shorter lenses. And we'll sum up by saying that the best way to carry your lens is with the lens in one hand and the tripod in the other. There are times, depending on the situation, when I'll put this strap over my head, Bolero style, free up both hands, find a comfortable spot, and carry the tripod. So for the best shoulder help, boy, just talking about this, my shoulder's hurting a little bit. Actually, I've been swimming a little bit harder. So, I made up my mind I'm going to Bosque, come rain or shine. So if you'd like to join us, you can check out the IPT page. As always, we ask if you're going to buy some new gear, use our B&H links. You can write me for advice or get in touch with the great folks at Bedford's.
And with that, I will say, enjoy. Love you much.